Take a good look at your kitchen. In it, you have a box that performs a minor miracle every single day. A machine that takes a cold plate of yesterday's dinner and makes it piping hot in under two minutes using nothing but invisible energy. It's magic. But the story of this kitchen wizard doesn't begin with a famous chef or a home appliance company. It begins here. In the heat of World War II, with a top secret weapon designed to hunt enemies in the dark. The year is 1945. The Allied war effort is running at full steam, and at the heart of its technological superiority is radar. At the Raytheon Company in Massachusetts, a man named Percy Spencer is the undisputed king of building magnetrons, the high-powered vacuum tubes that generate the microwaves for these radar systems. Now, Percy wasn't your typical lab coat-wearing scientist with a string of degrees. He was a self-taught genius, a man who had never finished elementary school, but had a natural intuition for engineering that bordered on supernatural. He was a tinkerer, a problem solver, and on this particular day, he was standing in front of one of his most powerful magnetron test sets. And he was about to make a discovery that had absolutely nothing to do with winning the war. As he worked near the humming machine, he reached into his pocket for a snack, a peanut cluster bar he'd been saving. But what he pulled out wasn't a solid candy bar. It was a gooey, sticky, melted mess. He stared at his chocolate-covered fingers, then at the magnetron, then back at his fingers. The room wasn't hot. He hadn't been sitting on it. There was only one possible culprit. The humming tube in front of him, the invisible radar waves, had cooked his candy bar. Another person might have just been annoyed about their ruined snack. But Percy Spencer was a scientist, and this strange phenomenon sparked his curiosity. A hypothesis was formed, and a true scientist always tests his hypothesis. He sent a boy out to fetch a bag of popcorn kernels, the ultimate scientific instrument, of course. He placed a handful of kernels on a piece of paper and aimed the magnetron's horn directly at them. For a moment, nothing happened. Then. A single kernel trembled, another joined it. Soon the entire pile was dancing and vibrating as if alive. Suddenly, with a series of sharp pops, the kernels exploded into fluffy white clouds, flying all over the top secret laboratory. His colleagues gathered around, stunned. But Percy wasn't done. He wanted to test something with a bit more drama. He grabbed an egg. Now Percy knew that cooking an egg this way would build up immense pressure inside the shell. He placed it inside a kettle to contain the inevitable outcome. A curious colleague, still buzzing from the popcorn spectacle, leaned in for a closer look just as the egg began to shake violently. A moment later, a catastrophic, yolk-splattering explosion erupted from the kettle covering the skeptic's face in hot, raw egg. Percy Spencer roared with laughter. He had discovered a revolutionary new way to cook. Raytheon, his employer, immediately saw the potential. The war was ending, and the company needed new products for a peacetime world. They patented the idea, and in 1947, unveiled the world's first commercial microwave oven. They called it the Radar Range. And it was a monster. It stood nearly six feet tall. It weighed 750 pounds. It cost $5,000, the equivalent of over $60,000 today. It made a loud, intimidating hum. And because the magnetron was so powerful, it needed to be water-cooled. It required not just an electrician, but its very own plumber for installation. You can just imagine the scene. A proud engineer flips the on switch for the first time, only for a pipe to burst, blasting the unfortunate plumber in the face with a jet of water. It wasn't just an oven. It was a potential indoor water feature. It was, to put it mildly, a commercial disaster. A few were sold to restaurants and hospitals, but the dream of a microwave in every home was dead on arrival. 
Who would want a refrigerator-sized, water-spewing metal behemoth in their kitchen that cost more than their car? For years, the amazing technology remained trapped in its giant, unsellable body. The solution was simple, but it would take two decades to achieve. Make it smaller, make it cheaper. This led to a long, slow process of innovation. So how does it actually work? All right, put on your safety goggles because we're about to do some science with snacks. Inside that box, the magnetron, the true beating heart of the machine, generates a beam of microwaves. These waves are particularly good at one thing, starting a party, specifically making the water molecules in your food dance. Imagine your leftovers on a microscopic level. Before you hit start, the little water molecules are just lounging around, bored and listless. Then the microwaves hit. It's not an invitation to dance, it's a command. The waves cause the tiny water molecules inside to vibrate billions of times per second. It's not an elegant waltz, it's a frantic, flailing, arms and legs everywhere kind of dance, like a dad at a wedding after three cups of punch. This frantic vibration creates friction as they bump into all their neighbors, and that friction creates heat. It's not magic, it's physics. A microscopic disco mosh pit in your dinner. Through the optimistic space age decades of the 50s and 60s, engineers at companies like Amana and Lytton worked tirelessly to tame the beast. The challenge was immense, to take a military grade piece of hardware and domesticate it for the modern home. Early countertop prototypes were still comically large, the size of a small washing machine, and often cost as much as a family vacation. But with each passing year, the magnetrons grew smaller, the power supplies more efficient, and the designs more elegant. The kitchen titan was slowly being shrunk down, piece by piece, wrestled into a form that wouldn't terrify the family cat. Finally, in 1967, the breakthrough came. The first compact countertop microwave oven was released at a price the average family could actually afford. It was an instant sensation. After a 20-year journey through secret labs, military bases, and failed restaurant trials, the revolution could finally begin in the heart of the home. From a top-secret weapon that hunted enemies in the night sky, to a melted chocolate bar in a curious inventor's pocket, from a 750-pound metal monster that nobody wanted, to the humble box that now sits in nearly every kitchen on Earth. The journey of the microwave is a powerful reminder that sometimes the most world-changing ideas aren't found in a grand strategic plan. They're found in the quiet moments of observation, in noticing the small, strange things that everyone else overlooks. It's a testament to pure, accidental curiosity and the simple question that drives all innovation. I wonder why that happened.